Hey folks, Bruce here from Fort Life, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about batteries and multiple battery setups. So what you see behind me here is not to be considered a dual battery setup. Even though you see two batteries here, those two batteries are the primary starting battery for this engine. This is a diesel and it requires two starting batteries. So a couple of things, those two batteries are still 12 volts. So this battery setup, although there are two of them, they are connected in parallel. That means the positive post of each battery is tied to the positive post. So positive to positive and negative to negative. I've got it disconnected right now because I'm running a desulfate cycle on this battery here. But this is effectively one big battery. Now, these two are not isolated from each other. So if one goes dead, they both go dead. These are both the starting batteries and the batteries to run the truck. Now, farther back here, you may see this line here that comes off my positive post and runs to a fuse. And this then runs through an isolator, which you can't see, it's in behind here. I'll get a shot of that in a minute. And that runs to the back of the truck where my true second battery is. Even though it's a third battery, it's my second battery system. It is an isolated battery separate from the, the batteries that run the truck. So I'm going to show you the setup that I have in the back right now and help you understand how to wire a second or third battery and the right way to do it so you don't run into problems. All right, well, this isn't the easiest place to video, but I hope you can get the idea from this. So what I have here in the back of the Land Cruiser, this little platform here is where my third battery would normally sit. It's out right now because I'm doing a bunch of springtime charging. This truck's been sitting for the winter. But you can see right here is the positive feed that would go to that battery. There's also a negative feed that comes out the other side and that runs directly to the negative on the front two batteries. So this positive feed here goes to the positive lead and you can see again it's short. And the first thing that it runs to is this fuse holder here, exactly the same as what I have in the front. You might be questioning why I have two fuse holders and I'll explain that in a minute. Front and back, I have an 80 amp ANL Blue C fuse fits into this fuse holder here, okay? This, after the fuse holder, runs up to the front of the truck where it connects to the battery isolator. Again, I'll explain a little bit more, but I wanted you to see the setup that's in the back. So battery, short wire, heavy gauge, fuse, and then the wire to the front. Okay, so what's this crazy guy talking about? We got two batteries in the front, we got one battery in the back, we got fuses and isolators. What's going on? All right. The two batteries in the front are acting as one with a larger capacity. When you put two batteries in parallel, you get double the capacity. When you put two batteries in series, you get double the voltage. So this is a 12 volt truck. It has two batteries in parallel for double the capacity. A lot of 70 series will have two batteries in series to give you 24 volt. Not the case with my truck, makes things a little bit easier. So in the front, we have the two batteries tied together. These two batteries, positive to positive and negative to negative, negative to ground and positive is feeding the truck. Okay, so here is the truck. That's the starter, all the internal electronics, everything that's in there. Now my battery at the back powers the fridge, powers my external camping lights, it's where the solar hooks in, and we've got an isolator. So coming off of this post here, I've got a fuse. I have that fuse as close to the battery as I can get it, and I'll explain why in a little bit. <clears throat> that comes off of here, and for the sake of this, this is my isolator, okay? Runs back here to another fuse, which runs to my positive post, again, as close as I can to that, uh, runs the positive post from the fuse as close as I can to the positive post. Now, there's obviously also a negative here, that just runs straight battery to battery. The body of the truck is ground. Everybody, I'm assuming, knows that. The ground cable doesn't need any protection. If it chafes and hits the metal, nothing's really going to happen. If the positive cable hits the body of the truck, where I've run it through the inside, through the firewall, anything like that, you're going to have some problems, and they're going to be big, and they'll probably end in fire. That is a large cable, and I've got two very large capacity batteries at the front, plus a third one at the back. So, that's why there's two fuses. You might think, well... If I get a short circuit right here, and that touches the uh, body of the truck, I've got a fuse here, so the battery's gonna pop the fuse, the current's gonna pop the fuse, and it's gonna stop flowing. The problem is, there's another battery here, so it can come this way. So you have to protect that tie-together circuit from 
two ends, you have to have two fuses. And the closer you can get them to the batteries, the more they're gonna do. If your fuse is 18 inches from the battery, you have 18 inches there where you can have a short that's completely unprotected. If this wire here, before the fuse, gets a short in it, there's nothing I can do. It's gonna get really hot, melt, and make a big mess. So that's why I have two fuses there. And any installation where you have multiple power sources, you wanna make sure you have overcurrent protection, a fuse or a breaker, as close as you can to each source of power. That's the key to making a proper safe installation, aside from getting all the crimps done properly and good clean connections. So <clears throat> keep in mind, big cable front to back so a lot of current can go. I've got current limiting with 80 amp fuses on each end and I've got them on each end. So if that cable chafes through in the middle, just gonna pop a fuse probably on both ends and I've just got a dead cable in the truck, all right? I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps people understand a dual battery setup a bit. We can get into isolators. There's a ton of different ways of isolating the battery. Basically it means that if this battery goes dead, it's not gonna drain these ones and vice versa. So if my fridge is running all night and it kills this battery, I can still start the truck. I'll do a separate video on isolators, types of isolators, but for now you can see how in the truck and how on paper my dual setup, or if you wanna look at it as a triple, works. I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked that video, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, share the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.